Hello. Big news this week. Kind of sort of teased it a few weeks ago. I knew this was coming. I was super excited about it. Uh, and, and, and now it can finally be revealed. What I talked about a couple weeks ago was uh, when we were talking about the exit of a kid's book about to DK. I mentioned Jelani Memory might have some other stuff kind of in the works. You know, Jelani, serial founder, helped co-found Circle, founded a kid's book about, which became a kid's co. Again, successful exit to DK Books uh, there, and he is working with DK, but he is also, get ready for this, combining forces with Stephen Green. Folks don't know Stephen Green. He's he's basically the, the mayor of Portland. I mean, not elected, but but by the people. He's the mayor of Portland, especially when it comes to small business and startups and entrepreneurship. He's also the founder of a little event called Pitch Black, which you may have heard of. I tend to hype it up a lot. But Jelani and Stephen had worked together in the past at a kid's book about or maybe, and maybe through the transition to a kid's co, but Stephen and Jelani are again combining forces this time in support of amazing startups in the community. This is kind of building upon Stephen's success with Pitch Black. You know, that, that happens once a year. It's a, an amazing event, but it's very much a moment in time. And and Stephen and Jelani were just really thinking through how can we continue to support founders day in and day out? How can we provide those founders with the, the services they need, especially when so many founders need kind of exactly the same services? You know, they need marketing. They need help with financials and projections. They need help with legal. They're like, why don't we embrace the venture studio model and create a way to support founders here in town who may have come through Pitch Black or may just be promising founders that they can work with, with a, a studio model. So they've started a startup studio called Vanport Studio. It's being housed within Instrument, the you know award-winning digital agency here in Portland that also has served as host for Pitch Black. Really, it's it's still a concept, but it's a really well thought out concept. I kind of mentioned this in my post, but you know, by and large, in these kind of situations, you you have kind of two two paths that people tend to take with building like incubator, accelerator, co-worky kind of things. And those paths, one path is, I don't know, let's just get everybody in the same room, see what happens, figure it out. The other path is let's go raise a lot of money and then figure it out. And while both of those paths can meet with success, <laughs> admittedly get everybody in the same room is kind of how we started Pi and we made a lot of mistakes and we messed up a lot, but then we finally got our footing and figured out what we were doing. Jelani and Steven have a, just a really thoughtful approach. And I got to attend kind of a soft launch with them. They kind of took us through the thinking. They're like, we're going to start here with some services that may be paid services or maybe in lieu of future revenue, but for profit, not nonprofit. How do we get these founders? the help they need to get over that next hump, to get over that next hurdle, to really keep their companies growing and thriving. Um, and, and, and how do we leverage Instrument in that way? How do we collaborate with the folks at Instrument to deliver those services that they provide to uh, you know any number of amazing brands out there? So Vanport Studio, to be explicit, is a startup studio. They're not investing in companies, they're providing services for promising startups. And I think, you know, if you have questions, if you're like, well, what does that mean? Or would they work with a startup like mine? Jelani said this at the event, it's really like, reach out, let's start a conversation. There's no like explicit curriculum or explicit services offering. They just want to talk to promising startups and figure out how Vanport Studio can help them. Now, in the future, there may be things like a fund. There may be additional events or additional opportunities to promote 
products. There may, you know, they even talked about potentially a retail environment that sells products. So they're, they've been very thoughtful about this. And I am always super excited to see organizations that are supporting startups and supporting founders. But with both Jelani and Steven's experience, this one is just, this is very like, remember this moment, because this is going to be something that's going to have a significant impact in our community. And uh, I can't wait to see where it goes from here. I'm so happy they've started this thing and are starting to engage with founders. I will obviously keep track of it and keep you up to date. But if you're interested, it's vanportstudio.com. You can get more information on it or read the post I wrote up. And uh, yeah, it's it, there's always more room for organizations that support startup founders here locally. And congratulations to Stephen and Jelani on starting this new project with Vanport Studio. <laughs> I can't think of anything creative to say. Just please subscribe. I'd love to see you here every week. Sorry, that's not that creative, but please subscribe and we can hang out, talk startup stuff week to week. Cool? Cool. Thanks. Speaking of helping businesses, uh, you'll remember a few months ago, I talked about the state of Oregon was funding a, a, a number of regional innovation hubs throughout the state that are really designed to be wayfinding, navigating sort of organizations. So entrepreneurs can come to these innovation hubs and say, hey, I need help with X, Y, or Z. And the innovation hub will go, okay, that's great. You need to go here. And uh, Portland was hiring for uh, executive director and a couple navigators in that organization. I think they're getting close on the executive director. So that may be something we can announce fairly soon. I've been in behind the scenes on the, on the hiring, but, uh, no formal decision or like contract yet, but, but it's getting close. So that will be news that will be coming up in a couple of weeks. But anyway, so, uh, <laughs> tangent, but, uh, regional innovation hub, and that's really focused on kind of venture scale innovation. Um, you know, companies that are pursuing, high growth, uh, high potential, innovative kind of companies. But as we all know, another area, perhaps the area in which Portland is strongest is Main Street, small business. And innovation, while at times can be helpful there, or the focus on innovation can be helpful to small business, small business is, is an an entity, a vertical in and of itself that has very unique needs. And so I was worried that the regional innovation hub might be not as helpful to folks like that. That's why I'm really happy to announce that Prosper Portland is starting an office of small business to be focused on those Main Street kind of retail folks, help them navigating and, and working their way through processes and permittings and, and all those kind of things. But before they can start that office, they need someone to lead it. And so Shay Flaherty Bettine is hiring somebody to be the director of that office of small business. And if that sounds like something that's interesting to you, they currently have a job opening for that role. I would highly encourage you to apply to it because it's going to be one of those like critical elements of the community that has not really existed to date. Like we've seen other private industry or nonprofits helping provide this kind of service and, and helping people navigate the system, but we really haven't had something funded by the city designed to focus on Portland small business in a way that is directly engaged with local government, at least in my experience, I haven't seen that. I feel like this could be a really compelling way to not only help founders, but also kind of help Portland in its recovery and its resurgence and its return 
to the greatness that, that we all recognize Portland has the potential to be. And so I'm really, I'm really excited about this. We have the innovation hub that's coming to fruition. We now have this office of small business. That's a lot of entrepreneurial support coming online for folks, a lot of collaboration and navigation and all these kind of things that can happen. And you know me, I love it when the people support the founders and support the entrepreneurs. So I'm very excited by this office of small business and highly encourage you to apply if you're excited about it as well. And again, I, I think we're getting close on the regional innovation hub and I'll let you know when they've made the selection there for the executive director and uh, those navigator positions as well. But this specifically office of small business through Prosper Portland. I don't know if I said that. Shea works at Prosper. And so Prosper will be the organization that houses this office of small business. And I, I'm excited. I can't wait to see uh, who they select and kind of where, where we go from here in support of entrepreneurs and founders. Other organizations that support entrepreneurs and founders often do it through funding. And you've heard me talk before about the quintessential funding venture capitalist here in town is Diane Freeman of Voyager Capital. Voyager is located in Seattle. Diane is here. I had the opportunity to listen to a really interesting interview from TAO, the Technology Association of Oregon. They sat down and chatted with Diane. They're giving her a Lifetime Achievement Award. And so they were talking to her and recorded it as a podcast. So I uh, highly encourage you to take a listen to that, learn more about Diane and her perspective on Portland and the startups here and the venture capital environment here. As I mentioned before, Diane has been uh, not only a huge proponent of the community, but super helpful to me personally. She's uh, been a mentor of mine for years and years, and uh, I always love when she gets the opportunity to share her knowledge with the broader community. So if you're into the podcasts and you have time to give that a listen, I highly encourage you to listen to the TAO interview with Diane Freeman from Voyager Capital. Voyager Capital is not the only venture capitalist we're talking about this week. There's also a piece from Oregon Venture Fund. So it's very much a, I love it because it's kind of this like providing additional insights on what it's like to engage with Oregon Venture Fund. So it's, it's very much a what to expect when you're expecting to engage with the Oregon Venture Fund, which is the largest fund local fund here, the most active, um, and the one that a lot of startup founders find themselves talking to, but maybe don't understand all the dynamics. And so Oregon Venture Fund, John Maroney's in there, uh, kind of a, providing some information on what their process is, what it's like to engage with them. I, I highlight John, not only because I just saw him the other day, but because he is really the deal flow kind of lead. He's the, he's the public facing side of OVF and the kind of first conversation that most folks have. So his name may be a name that you recognize. The video though, just provides a, a kind of context for what to expect and their process, what they're looking for, what the kind of steps are. So if you are a startup founder building a venture scale startup and you're thinking about talking to Oregon Venture Fund, I highly encourage you to watch that video so you have more context and more understanding of what to expect as you begin your conversations with OBF. And I hope they go well. I, I sincerely hope they go well. I hope they move forward, but I would really love for you to have all of that understanding before you have your first conversation, likely with John. So take a look at that. I will link that up. You know, it's hard to believe, but we're midway through the year already. And summer tends to be a time where a lot of new people are moving here. Folks are back from college uh, and just a lot of new people engaging in the community. And so it dawned on me that it is probably a really good time to just provide a little refresher on how to engage in the community. You know, it could be the Portland startup Slack, could be checking out Caligator, Portland startup switchboard, 
attending really cool events like Demolicious, which is coming up next week, or Founder Coffee, or AI Portland, which is honestly, whether you're doing AI or not, AI Portland's probably the best community event going right now. So if you want to engage Portland startup community, or maybe you're thinking about moving to Portland, maybe you're just curious about what's going on with Portland startups. I did my usual kind of rundown on like, here are all the things to check out or the events or the, the services that are offered. So um, I've also recorded a, a piece on that before, so I'll make sure and link that up. But for the latest and greatest, you want to check out that post. And I look forward to hanging out with you on the Portland startup Slack, which I believe is up to like 7,000 people or so, which is really just designed to help people get connected and ask questions. There's been some really good activity on there lately. And then of course, I would be remiss if I did not mention Rosie. Rosie is kind of our AI assistant, you know, co-pilot for the Portland startup community who will answer questions about Portland and investors and events and, and all those kind of things. So if you have questions that aren't answered in the post, you can always go talk to Rosie and see what he has to offer for you in terms of the Portland startup community and getting your questions answered. If you're new to Portland, welcome. Glad you're here. If you're thinking about Portland, come on over and learn more about our community. But whatever the case, please take advantage of those resources, get engaged with the community, and let's make sure you're connected with the people you need to be connected with. All right, I mentioned Demolicious is next week. Uh, that's a big deal. Again, Demolicious, the format is somebody wins, startup pitch competition, somebody wins, they come back the following month, compete against a whole bunch of other companies, have the potential to retain their title. No one's done that yet, but who knows? This may be the time. I think it's Airbuild is the champion now. I think they may have the potential. I don't know. You have to show up and see and see who walks away with the win and the, you know, getting to put their sticker on the Demolicious belt or whatever it is. So that'll be happening Thursday of next week. Uh, highly encourage you to attend. As always, that's organized by Josh Carter and sponsored by Upstart Collective. I believe it'll be held at Upstart Collective on the west side, which is a former Portland State Business Accelerator building. But if you want to see a bunch of new pitches from startups that might not be familiar to you, and they've featured 40 this year alone, 40 startups that are brand new to a lot of folks, please make sure and attend Demolicious. Cool. Well, that's it for this week. Uh, super excited about Vanport. Vanport Studio it's going to have significant impact in the community and looking forward to that. Learn a little bit more about Diane or OVF. Go to Demolicious. Read the primer on how to get engaged in the Portland startup community. And, and I'll look forward to running into you either on the Portland startup Slack or maybe in real life at one of the upcoming events. Cool. Well, I uh, hope you're doing okay. Hope you're hanging in there. I uh, hope your startup stuff is going well. And until we get the chance to chat again, please keep up the good work. Look, I realize I just threw a ton at you, but if you can stand a little more startup news, I've got some for you right here.